they put you in a firing squad. They don't even roll the cameras. They just say, okay, you, 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 you stay. You, oh you gosh. can, you can leave. And every time I would be sent home, I would see all the other girls were mestiza. Hi, I'm Tess Albea, and I'm joined with Nadine Lustre. What was that moment for you where you kind of felt in your own skin or mm. starting to really embrace your beauty and feeling you didn't need to do any of those things? That didn't really happen overnight, you know. It was a long oh. process of just learning to accept who I am. I think I started hosting when I was seven. Oh my God. Yeah, that's wild. Oh I, I don't know how I did that, but I guess for me back then, it was just more of, I get this experience that not every kid who's at my age would get, you yes. know? It was fun for me. But my teen years, that's when it become tricky because you kind of start becoming a bit conscious about yourself. You're learning about yourself. And yes. the thing is like, with that learning comes insecurities, comes like, you know, confusion like not knowing what it is that you want to do. I'm not uh, good enough. This is coming from, from Filipinos as well. Just comments online saying that like, I'm too dark. And you know, I'm always at the beach, right? I love the beach. Safe. I love surfing, I love swimming. I just love hanging out under the sun. It makes me Nadine. And I, I'm proud to be Filipino. In some places for other like um, nationalities, they want the skin that we have. Correct. They like the features that we have. I really think it's just like wanting to have something that you don't have or yeah. liking something that you don't often see. It all boils down to just, you know, us learning to accept yeah. what it is that we have. Exactly. And, yeah. and not be afraid of the sun, not yes. be afraid of like getting dark, like not having to waste time on trying to get back my skin yeah. color. Especially if you're in that kind of industry where you have to be perfect. I would be lining up for hours to go into a VTR. They put you in a like a, a firing squad and then they don't even roll the cameras. They just say, okay, you, 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 you stay. You, oh you can, you can leave. And every time I would be sent home, I would see all the other girls were mestiza. That made me feel bad. I did a lot of things that would just kind of boost up my confidence and it started with taking like glutathione, scrubbing, yeah. uh, using like whitening products. My insecurities were like crazy just because of that. Obviously mm -hmm. there's challenges in our lives that yeah. always come up. Um, has there been anything in your life that really challenged you where you had to pick things up, just go, or you know, something yeah. maybe that you haven't talked about? The most challenging one that I've gone through was when my brother passed away. And my brother was going through all of these like challenges with his mental health as well. I was still doing a variety show every day. Oh my gosh. Um, so can you imagine, like I was grieving, but at the same time, you like I'm in front of TV, and, yeah. I had to smile, I had to interact with people, like nothing happened. So that was really hard. Um, and at some point, you know, when I felt that I was already like crumbling, I'd ask for a break. How they responded was, like you just keep working you're gonna forget about it and like, that's it's it it just goes to show how uneducated and how out of touch we are when it comes to like mental health issues yes. still to this day like every time i think about that time i still don't know how i got through that it was just like autopilot yeah you kind of have to pull through Correct. because it's a responsibility you know, um, as much as you want to like take a break and kind of have to breathe from it can't really do anything, you can't really know. There's especially no if you're in contra under contract, you know, so you have to honor that. Congratulations on the cover of Vogue. Thank and you. Again, as you know, you're such an icon in the Philippines and a little bit talking about it's Women's History Month and a little bit about being a woman and the challenges of it. What do you say are things that people misunderstand about mm -hmm. you? I, I'm not used to hearing the word icon a lot, so thank you for that. I'm a chill person. You can, I, I, can, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> it's super chill, chill. We're just relaxing. There we no, go. I'm a comfortable. very chill person. <laughs> like, I don't like making things too complicated. I could go to the mall and just do my groceries yeah. and, you know, that's it. Like, I can be in my pantulog if ever, whatever. But the thing is, like, every time people see photos of me online, I, I always get the comment that I don't wear makeup. I don't like dress up in a certain way. Yeah. But the thing is, I mean, I love dressing up. I love, you know, like picking out like shoes. But at the same time, you know, there would be days when I'm like, yeah, I just can't be bothered. You go vacationing, you're yeah. in Sargao a lot. Uh, what are ways that you deal with mental health? Because I think that for women, a lot of times it's always, what we post out there is, our life is together, mm. it's always happy moments, mm. but really talking about the, the dirty and the bad and those mm. really cloudy days are really difficult. Well, I'm lucky because I do have Shargao as my safe space. 
you know, I can be in Manila for like a month and just grinding nonstop. And I look forward to going back home to Siargao so I can just like let go, breathe and not think about anything. I'm lucky uh, for having that, but I do understand that not everyone has the luxury of being able to like go out of town or even out of the country to just have a breather. If I can't go to Siargao, I really take care of myself. If it's like material things, it just kind of made me more sad because I, my, my wallet starts crying, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't believe in those things. Yeah. Like I believe like that the more simple it is, the better. Just because it feeds your soul. And I imagine myself as my own best friend and I hang out with myself. Like I take myself out on dates. Yeah. I eat out by myself. You know, people would be like, why is she eating alone? Is she crazy? Like, why? I, like, I'm taking myself out on a date. It's a thing, That's okay? That's people's most number one fear. Is yeah. Eating alone eating in public, alone, going yeah. to a movie alone Yeah, I, but I love it. Might sound weird, but I always have conversations with myself. I don't physically talk to myself, but it's just in my head, you know? So it's just as simple as asking yourself, like, okay, what do you want to do today? Yeah. Just checking in with yourself, like, what are you feeling when I start treating myself in that way? It healed me a lot. So I recently just turned 30 as well. Happy birthday! Thank you, <laughs> thank thank you. So I know you're already 30 as well. Yes. And what is that advice that you can give or those best moments looking back at your life now? And My friends who are in their 30s, they're like, girl, you're tripping. That's just, that's just whatever, you know? People are just scaring you. But honestly, for me, the only thing that was really bothering me before I turned 30 was the fact that a lot of things might change with regards to like my goals, yeah. what I wanted to do, like where I wanted to be, or the things that I love, the things that I like, even the food. I mean, I like where my career is going, yeah. but so much could happen. Yes. So much could change, you know? Um, I have friends who just turned 30 and they're like getting married, yeah. having Same. kids. <laughs> that was one of like the biggest fears that I had, like turning 30. But then I'm here now, um, still very clueless about what I want to do. <laughs> so it's at least, yeah, I mean, it's it's a process. And I, I do believe that confusion is beautiful because yes. once you like finally decide or find out what it is that you want to do, you'll be like, oh, okay. That confusion was was a part of, of me figuring out what I really wanted to do. So yeah, I'm always seeing like the silver lining and good things that, yes. that I could get from, from this. Yeah, and yes. you learn from that. Yeah, and that that's just growth. Thank you so much, Nadine, for thank sharing you. your story. Thank you, I'm super excited for my 30s now. <laughs> uh, thank you to everyone that is watching Solid Talks Unfiltered. Uh, if you can please let them know where to find you on your socials. Yes, um, for all of you that don't know where to find me, um, I'm on Instagram. My handle is at Nadine. So you get more updates on my future projects in there. So stay tuned. Thank you, we'll see you later. Thank you.